Good morning. I am Professor Ravindran, the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering of Singhis Yogi Pagino. Dear students, today we are going to discuss about the input and output characteristics of NPN transistor under common emitter configuration. The last class we have discussed about the different configurations such as common base configuration, common emitter configuration, and common collector configuration. So the features of these configurations were also discussed in that class. So today, how a common emitter configuration of an NPN transistor will behave for the input signals given to it, and what is its input characteristics, and what are all the output characteristics, or what, are, what, are, what is the output characteristic of an NPN transistor under common input configuration. <coughs> the transistor characteristic can be broadly divided into input characteristics and output characteristics. What is meant by input characteristic? Input characteristic is the float between the input voltage and the input current at a constant output voltage. Similarly, the output characteristic is also the float obtained between the output voltage and the output current at a constant input current. So let us discuss about these characteristics in detail now. So you know the common emitter configuration here, the emitter is common to both the input side and output side. The base emitter junction or base emitter side is the input side. And collector base side is the output side. The base emitter side, as we have already discussed, the base emitter side is always forward bias. Similarly, the collector emitter or collector base side, not collector emitter, collector base side or collector base junction is reverse bias. So in the transistor, the base emitter diode is forward biased and collector base diode is reverse biased. That is symbolically represented here and also this is the block symmetric diagram. Why these transistor cats are known to us or why should we know the, the characteristics? The transistor characteristics are useful for studying the behavior of the transistor, for using it for specific applications such as amplifiers, to use it as a switch, etc. There are two types of characteristics, namely the input and output characteristics. Now we will discuss these characteristics one by one. So here is the circuit diagram for plotting the input and output characteristics of an NPN transistor. And here, this is a voltage divider, and this voltage divider gives the input voltage to the base emitter junction, and this voltmeter connected across the base emitter lead will be giving the input voltage given to the base emitter junction. And this microammeter will be measuring the base current, which is applied through the base of the transistor. This is essentially an NPN transistor. And what are all the connections on the uh, output side? As we know, the collector base junction is reverse biased, and that potential, reverse biased potential, reverse biased potential is taken through a potential divider or voltage divider. Here too. VCC is given through a potential divider. The output of the potential divider is given to the collector base junction, which is reverse biased. The polarity negative is connected to the positive side of the base and the positive is connected to the n type material, n type lead or n lead of the NPN transistor. And the collector current can be measured with the milliammeter connected into the collector lead. And the voltage across the collector and the emitter, that is VCE, can be measured with this voltmeter. As we know, In the base emitter diode of the NPN transistor, in order to conduct the transistor, the base emitter junction must be forward biased. For forward, forward biasing the base emitter junction, we require to have only a very small voltage because the transistor will, or the base emitter junction of the transistor will conduct current when the base emitter voltage is greater than the cutting voltage 
and that cutting voltage in the case of the silicon diode, silicon material transistor is 0 0.7 volt. Similarly, in the collectrometer side, the voltage applied because it is the reverse bias junction, so you have to apply a, a large voltage as the reverse bias voltage or reverse bias voltage. Here. So now let us consider <coughs> the input characteristic of the transistor. So what is input characteristic? It is the curve plotted between base emitter voltage VBE and base current IB for different values of collector emitter voltage VC. The curves are similar to the characteristics of a forward bias PN junction. The emitter base junction behaves like a forward bias PN junction diode. Here, this is the emitter base junction. So here it is forward bias. So this input characteristic is very similar to a forward bias PN junction. So here, when we increase the voltage, when we increase the voltage slightly from 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, like that. Initially, the current is not appreciable. There is no measurable value of current. The current is almost zero, up to 0 0.5, 0 0.6, like that. And from 0 0.65, 0 0.7 volt, the current gradually increases. It means that the diode, the pin, junction of the NPN transistor, which is forward bias, is now conducting current. So when VB is increased further, after 0 0.7 volt, the diode is gradually conducting. So for different values of the input voltage VB, we will get different input current, that is IB. So for different values of, for different values of input voltage VB applied here, we will be getting different IB and IB is gradually increased. That is shown. So here we have plotted the VB versus IB curve when VC is kept as 2 volt. So we will set VC here to be equal to 2 volt. VC equal to be 2 volt here. Once it is set, it is kept as it is constant. Then we increase the voltage from 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and it goes on and 0 0.6, 0 0.7. When it becomes 0 0.7 for a silicon transistor, it starts conducting because the cutting voltage for silicon transistor, uh, PN junction is 0 0.7 volt. So when the voltage is just above 0 0.7, the current starts increasing. IB will be the input current IB will be increasing. So for, for different values of EB, we take or we uh, note down the values of the IB or the input current through the base and these results of different VBE and the corresponding IB are plotted on it, plotted on and tablet. Okay. So initial small amount of base current flows up to certain values of base emitter voltage. This voltage at which emitter current starts to increase is known as cutting voltage that I have just told you now and that is 0.37 for germanium and 0 0.7 for silicon. So beyond the cutting voltage, the base current IB gradually increases and, sharp, and it increases sharply, even for a small change in VB. Say so once the PN junction of the NPN transistor is forward by us then becoming conducting or becomes conducted, then with a very small change in VB, the corresponding base current will be very large. It sharply increases. For an increase in VC, the curve shifts downwards. So for one set of reading, we have this. For one set of reading, we got the curve like this. We got the curve like this. Now we set the voltage VC, that is collectometer voltage is set to 6 volt. Slightly increased volt. Slightly increased collectometer volt. Then again, we uh, increase the value of VPE, that is base emitter voltage, slightly from 0 0.3, 0 0.4, like that. And which goes on and after 0 0.7 of course the diode starts conducting and the current will be increasing with a very small change in VB. But here you can see that this curve plotted as input characteristic that is between VB and IB the curve plotted is just downwards than that of the float 
we got when vc is equal to 2 volts or the when vc is equal to 6 volts the curve shifts downwards again when vc is 10 volts again the curve shifts to downwards so this is the three curves we have plotted now so these three curves are called the input characteristic again if you want you can plot the curve for by taking vc is equal to 12 volt so accordingly we will be having different plots like this between vb and ib and the plot between vb and ib that is the base asymmetric voltage and the base current is called the input characteristics characteristics and that is constant that is the input characteristics now <coughs> why this uh, curve which i told you the curve for higher vce is slightly downward compared to the vc which is lesser in the earlier case so if you increase vc further and take the different readings of vbe bar vbe and ib you will be getting a curve which is down why this curve is getting or shifted downward and this shifting of the curve downward to the increase in electrometer voltage is due to the phenomena what is called the early effect that is what is called the early effect uh, or base width modulation and this phenomena was invented by the scientist physicist and scientist early and named after his uh, uh, named after his uh, that is uh, after his uh, after he invented this particular phenomena uh, after his name this particular phenomena was known to be early effect and this is nothing but the increasing of depletion region of the collector base junction which penetrates towards the base or modulated towards the base that is why this is called base width modulation early effect or base width modulation actually causes the shifting of the input characteristic curve when vc is increased and what is the input resistance one of the parameters that we can find out from the input characteristic is the resistance offered to the signal the resistance offered by the transistor to the input signal the resistance offered by the transistor to the input signal the input signal will be always ac in nature that is why the dynamic resistance or ac resistance ri is given by delta vbe divided by delta ib for VCE constant. It means that if you take any one of these curves, say VCE is equal to 10 volts. So if you want to get the AC dynamic resistance or the, the resistance offered by a signal uh, to this transistor under these conditions, then in order to find out the AC resistance, what we do is we will take some two uh, recurring input voltages VBE. Initially, the VB is equal to say some 0 0.8 volts, then the VB is increased to 0 0.9 or 0 0.1, 1, 1 volt. So, we will be getting a change in voltage delta VB that is 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 is 0.1 or 0 0.8 to 1 volt is 0 0.2. So, delta VB will be 0 0.2. What is the corresponding change occurring in the current? So, for 0 0.8, say let us consider 0 0.8. This is the current that is almost 38 microamperes. 38 microamperes. See now when it comes to one volt, when it reaches to one volt, or when delta VB is equal to 0 0.8 to one volt, that is uh, delta VB is equal to 0 0.2 volt. With the two volt, 0 0.2 volt changes, the current which is increased to almost 40 microamperes. So 38 to 40 microamperes that changes have occurred. So if you draw a triangle between these two points, that is uh, delta VBE and uh, delta IB. So you will be getting a triangle whose, trans whose opposite side will be a tangent, a tangent to the curve at the point control. So here, if you draw a tangent and drawing a triangle like this, this triangle is the a resistance triangle or impedance triangle that will give you the input resistance. That is nothing but delta VB divided by delta IB for VC is equal to 10 volt in this particular case. That is it is given that input resistance RI is equal to delta VB divided by delta IB for VCE constant. 
here in our case the case we consider vc is equal to 10 volts that we have seen now what is output characteristic the curves plotted between the collector to emitter voltage vc and the collector current dc that is the output characteristic is the plot between collector to emitter voltage vc and collector current dc for different values of for different constant values of i not different values of ib different constant of so for once for one set of vc and ic voltages and current we set a particular value of ib then we set the value of ib increased and then again take different values of vc and ic corresponding value of ic increasing vc corresponding value of ic like that the curves plotted between the collector to emitter voltage vc and collector current ic for constant value of the base current and that curve plotted is called the output characteristic the characteristic curve for the typical npn transistor is shown here now so this is the characteristic curve. okay now the graph consists of three regions of operation this is the graph and here this graph has got initially ib is equal to 0 let us consider the case initially the ib is equal to 0 because if you put a switch here if you put a switch here if you want you can put a switch here or if you just take if you just take the uh, or if you set this voltage voltage divider in such a manner that the voltage applied is equal to zero that means there is no collector current i mean there is no base current there is no input current base current there is no input base current so collector current is also not there practically so since the base current is not there then collector current is not there practically but when you consider ib is equal to zero that is there is no base current but even then there is a very small value of ic due to the collector base reverse bias and that is due to the leakage or leakage current or reverse saturation current due to the reverse biasing of the collector base junction and also the emitter base junction is also reverse biased under this condition because there is no base current so the collector to emitter current will be a current which is a reverse saturation current or leakage current that is represented with the help of or that is designated as iceo iceo means it is the collector to emitter current when base is open circuited when base is not connected or when base is not having any current when base is not having any current and this leakage current is known as iceo that is the reverse leakage current of the current through the uh, reverse biased collector base junction now um, i told you there are three regions of operation here when collector ib is when the when the base current ib is equal to zero that is there is no input current the collector emitter voltage versus the collector current is given by a small value of current which is flowing through this and that is plotted here and this current is the reverse leakage current reverse leakage current total because that is the current which is flowing through the collector base junction when the ib when the base current is zero now you increase the base current by slowly adjusting the base emitter voltage by adjusting the base emitter voltage you adjust the uh, base current is equal to 10 microamp then you increase the collector emitter voltage collector emitter voltage is increase 1 2 3 4 like that for each collector emitter voltage increase the uh, the collector current will be gradually increase initially it gradually increase like this and then with the increase in uh, we see of course there is no appreciable change in the collector current you can see that is why this curve is almost parallel to the x axis but it is not parallel of course it is almost parallel which means that the uh, collector current will be will not have much change even if collector emitter voltage is increased right so this is the curve for uh, vc versus ic when ib is equal to 10 micro now again if you increase the input current that is ib is equal to 20 micro amp you will be getting a graph like this so correspondingly for 30 micro amp you will be getting graph like this so for 40 micro amp you will be getting a graph for vc versus ic like this so you will be getting a set of graph like this and this graph is called the output characteristic curve of the npn transistor under ce configuration so the npn transistor is connected in ce configuration the output characteristic will be always like this will be always like this. 
in this graph you can see a portion which is here like this this is a portion and this is also another portion where the transistor is not conducting because ib is equal to zero when ib is equal to zero there is a small leakage curve going through the collector base junction that is from here or in other words the transistor is not operating under this condition and this particular region where the input current is zero the collector current is iceo that is collector emitter current when base is open circuit this region the transistor is not operated or transistor is in the off condition now when uh, for different values of the ib that is input current you plot the output characteristic curves like so if you closely look on this one you can see that the output characteristic the current the ic will be gradually glow, uh, increasing the output current will be gradually increasing with increase in base current and there is a region here where the collector current will be maximum the collector current becomes maximum and there is no effect of the collector emitter voltage for this maximum or in other words this region of operation of the transistor is called the saturation region in saturated condition the collector current will be maximum but the collector emitter voltage will be almost equal to zero or it will be very small of the order of some 0 0.5 0.6 volt or so or in other words we say that the transform transistor is get saturated so this is the saturated region of operation for the transistor so in between this cut off re in between this off region that is the cut off region and the saturated region the transistor is having a region that is what is called the active region so every transistor is having these three regions of operation that is the cut off region where the transistor is in the off condition then the saturation region when the transistor is on and which is not operating as an amplifier instead it is which is put on and there will be maximum collector current but there is a very minimum collector emitter voltage or it is that condition of the transistor we say that the transistor is in the on condition because there is output current collector current that is output current or output collector current maximum and in between this region that is saturation region and the cut off region there is a transistor region what is called the active region and for every transistor this active region is very important to understand because most of the transistors are working on this particular region of operation that is in the active region of operation what is uh, there in the active region in active region of operation the transistor will be amplifying the signal or the transistor will be acting as an amplifier that is the importance of active region in the active region the transistor can amplify the signal given to the input that is on the base side on the base side okay the emitter the active region you have to note down this important things the active region emitter junction is forward bias and collector base junction is reverse bias when vc is increased there is slight increase in i here i told you in the active region once the transistor gets in the active region even if you have increased vce the collector emitter voltage but there is a very small increase in collector current that is why this curves are almost parallel to each other except it is parallel but it seems to be almost parallel to each other because the change in collector current with the change in vce is very small so this region of operation that is in the active region of operation the transistor will be working as an amplifier it will be working as an amplifier now why this slight increase in ic is occurred in transistor when vc is increased because we should know that the collector base junction is always reverse bias in the transistor operation. so in the collector base junction i told you there is a, 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 a phenomena called base width, width modulation or early effect so this early effect will be always giving 
so that will be always giving a widening of the depletion region at the collector based junction because the collector based junction is reverse bias and this early effect this base width modulation causes this changes in collector current very small with the change in or increasing collector width voltage and also in the active region the collector current is given by the equation the current gain beta into the base current ib and also a reverse leakage current icjo will be flowing through the transistor because the collector based junction is reverse bias also the current gain beta ac because the transistor is working in a uh, it is amplifying a signal condition and that signal can be an alternative signal so usually the current gain beta ac is considered beta ac is given by small change in ic that is small change in the output current delta ic divided by delta ib small change in delta ib small change in ib that is delta ib for a constant value of ec for beta ac is given by delta ic by delta ib for a constant ec if you just consider one particular curve and draw a triangle a triangle here taking two consecutive vc so find out the change in vc what will be the corresponding changes in current find out the out uh, change in current delta ic so delta vc and delta delta vc is here delta ic is here and that delta vc divided by delta ic will be giving you the output resistance offered by the transistor under the condition in the active region under the conditions mentioned here that is the active region of operation that is the output resistance offered by the transistor under active region of operation and the beta ic that is the change in current delta ic divided by delta ib for a particular value of vc volt for a particular value of vc in volts now what is this early effect or base width modulation how it affects the transistor operation when reverse bias across the collector based junction increases the collector based depletion width also increases so the depletion layer penetrates more into the base region than the collector region i told you the construction of the transistor is such that the emitter is heavily doped base is lightly doped and the collector is moderately doped since the collector is carrying the output current which is larger than the input current and other currents in the transistor so the tra the collector based junction will be always having much heat developed or power dissipated so that is why the collector junction or collector of collector material or the collector feed uh, n type material of the transistor is usually having larger area in order to dissipate the heat so the depletion layer formed at the collector based junction that will be penetrating into the base but the base is already a little very small thin one is slightly dark so again it penetrates into the base the depletion region penetrates into the base further causes the base region to be thinned further so the base region gets very much thin or effective base width reduces very much so what that is shown here so initially the pn junction and pn this is also in pn junction and p junction and pn junction so when we give pb here this is the depletion region form and when it is forward biased this will be gradually uh, there is no uh, depletion region formed here when the voltage applied will be more than this uh, barrier potential it will start conducting but what about the depletion region formed by the collector based junction which is reverse biased the reverse biased pn junction of course the depletion region will be larger because this is the collector based junction which is the uh, reverse bias so this is the effective width of the base when this reverse biasing is given but once the reverse biasing is given and the transistor works in the active region of operation 
hard day happens, you know, the base width will be getting reduced due to the enhancement of the character base depletion region widened. So now the effective base width is reduced compared to the earlier. This is the depletion width now, and this is the effective base width. So this effective base width is now reduced. Or in other words, VBE less than VCE1 less than VCE2 in our example. <coughs> At that particular condition only this phenomena takes place here. The VBE means that is the base emitter voltage that is very low, that is less than one volt in most of the case. But what about VCE1? VCE1 we have already given. VCE1 has uh, one volt, two volt, three volt like that. We have given. Then VCE2 is another curve. Another curve in the uh, transistor, uh, trans another curve in the transistor input characteristic where VCE2 is greater than VCE1. That is shown here. VBE less than VCE1 less than VCE2. So, in that case, the width of the base will be getting thinned or the effective width of the base is reduced. And the early effect has the following consequence. What are those consequences? You know, increase in emitter current, which in turn causes an increase in the current. Increase in emitter current, which in turn causes an increase in the collector current. So, emitter current decreases means collector current will definitely increase because what is emitter current? Emitter current is the sum of the collector current and base current. And for a particular common, for a particular Input current, base current is constant means collector current will be increased. Yes, collector base reverse bias increases, whole concentration gradient in base increases. Yes, collector base reverse bias increases. What happens? The whole concentration gradient in base increases because when the collector base reverse bias increases means most of the electrons will be attracted towards the collector, isn't it? Most of the that is attracted towards the collector due to its reverse biasing. So the hole concentration gradient in the base will be increased. Recombination of the electron hole pairs will be reduced and the hole concentration in the base will be getting increased. As effective base width decreases, due to the early effect, effective base width decreases, there is less chance for the recombination and the base current decreases. So once the effective base width decreases, what happens? There is a less chance for recombination because effective base width decreases means all concentration increases and that all concentration, concentration there is no uh, emitter, I mean, there is no electron hole pair recombinations possible further. Or in other words, effectively, the base current is decreased. So when the base current is decreased, what happens to beta? That is the current gain. The current gain beta will be IC divided by IB, isn't it? So when IB is increased and IC is increased, what happens? The current gain beta of the common emitter concentration is increased. This increase in beta will increase further the collector current. Increased beta means collector current will be further increased. And this phenomena goes on. And at some point, when the effective base width reduced to zero, suppose there is no base width as there is no base as the base width reduces to zero due to this early effect or base width modulation what happens there is no effective base width there the transistor will be eventually broken down the junction is broken down and that will be a permanent damage for the transistor that is why the early effect or the base width modulation has to be controlled in a transistor that has to be controlled. Okay, there are certain methods for the uh, controlling of uh, uh, early effect and base width modulation. That is by doping also, only by do changing the doping concentration and doping. And that is not uh, discussed here. Uh, you need not uh, uh, know much about uh, about the uh, theoretical aspects about the Only thing is that the base width modulation actually causes to reduce the base width or actually. That is why it is called base width modulation because the culture based depletion layer will be penetrating towards the base in order to make its base width reduced due to the early. And since the base width is 
reduced further that is reduced to beta or the collector can will be further reduced and eventually this reverse biasing of the capacitance tension causes to make the base width equal to zero in some particular point of time so that may cause to damage the entire transistor and transistor will be damaged that should not occur that is why the early effect of base width modulation must be controlled then what are the specifications for transistors the transistors have uh, important specifications like current gain maximum dc collector current that is ic maximum ic maximum power rating at the collector base junction and the breakdown ratings that is reverse breakdown what is the maximum reverse breakdown voltage that is reverse bias to be given at the collector base calculator so transistor uh, calculator junction is reverse bias this calculator uh, leads are reverse bias or collector base junction is reverse bias and what will be the maximum value of the breakdown voltage for reverse breakdown voltage of junction these are our important specification for the time okay so we have discussed about the input and output characteristics of transformer how the input characteristics is plotted and how the output characteristics is plotted what are the implications of input and output characteristics and from the input and output characteristics what are the important things which we know and how the transistor operates in the three regions of operation that is the saturation and cutoff region that is off and uh, uh, saturation and cutoff region means on and off condition that is as a switch and uh, the active region that is transistor acting as an amplifier so a transistor can be used as a switch and it can be used as an amplifier so with this we conclude the session here thank you parents thank you very much for patiently for the lecture I wish, wish you all the very best. Thank you.